You know how veterinarians are always warning you to bring your animals in when it gets cold? Well, I want to find out what it feels like and how cold it gets in a doghouse left outside overnight. I'm just north of Chicago, Illinois, and currently it's about 12 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's a typical winter's night. There's no snow on the ground, not very windy, not a severe winter storm warning. What I hope to accomplish by sleeping or attempting to stay as long as possible in this doghouse is what does it feel like for a dog to be left outside with only their fur to protect them from the elements. Now I'm going to be decked out in the latest and high tech ski and snow gear to help me stay as long as possible. The ultimate purpose of this video is to help prevent the suffering of animals and potentially save lives. So let's get started. So you can see all the gear that I'm wearing to try to protect myself from the cold. And it's easy to say, wow, you know, dogs have these amazing coats and it protects them from the cold, but think about it. Aside from a few specialized breeds, does your dog really have the equipment needed to survive a cold night outside? <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be my home for as long as I can stand it. Just getting started, it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the doghouse. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes and the temperature in here, 20, about 25 degrees. I've got a infrared thermometer. The top is 15.9 degrees. I'll go through uh, just little bits of shivering. That's ice crystals that are forming inside here. Okay, it's been a little over an hour. It is now about uh, 21, 22 degrees. It's cold. My feet are getting a little numb. Dogs do have some adaptations that humans don't, especially with their extremities. Their, their arteries uh, are a little bit deeper. At this level, for prolonged exposure, no dog is biologically adapted to handle this. They're going to make the best of it. They're going to curl up. They're going to just have to suffer through the cold. It is, it is suffering. The thought I remember most vividly about the hot car experiment was just wanting to get out. Just go out, out, out. Whereas the cold just saps my energy and just makes me want to stay, stay, stay. I'm a hour and a half in, 18 degrees, and I'm getting numb. My right numb is, it's just, it's my right leg is numb, having some problems making coherent thoughts. Imagine you're a dog and this is your life. If this can help prevent the suffering of one animal, if this can save the life of one animal, then it's worthwhile for me to do this little experiment. If you're considering, you know, leaving your dog or cat or, you know, outside, they'll suffer. I really worry about the animals with subclinical conditions, the older pets, who maybe the thyroid isn't quite functioning normally, the adrenals aren't producing enough, cor enough cortisol. I mean, there's a lot of minor hormonal imbalances that could completely be thrown out of whack if you put them under this kind of stressor. What about a younger dog? What about a dog that has arthritis? Can you imagine the exacerbation of the pain that you would have from sitting in a cramped area cold all night long, shivering. I took an oath to alleviate animal suffering and I believe that this will help people understand what it's like to be left in a doghouse overnight when it's cold. Two hours in, hanging out right around 20, 21 degrees or so. I probably got a little closer to the thermometer, so that warmed it up a little, which is good. The conductive heat loss is really what's what's killer here. So you're a dog, and you're laying here. You don't have any other choice. You're you're 
in contact with the ground when we argue that dog's fur is somehow magically warmer. I mean, think about what I'm wearing, and I'm freezing out here. It gets cold in the doghouse at night. Uh, over two and a half hours in, around 18, 19. It's, uh, it's miserable. Whatever you're touching, the ground just is sapping the energy right out of me. I, I can't help but think a dog has to feel somewhat similar to what a human would feel in this situation. It's just cold. These are the type of stressors that take their physiological toll on you. It accelerates your demise. It deteriorates your quality of life. And for me as a veterinarian, I'm just interested in understanding how can I improve the quality of life for the animals that I love and care for. There's just no way you can ever convince me that a dog comes out here, curls up, and is just perfectly content and happy. Three hours in, about 18 degrees. Let's see what my temperature is. For many of us, it's unconscionable. We can't imagine putting our beloved pets through this. There's no way a dog can heat up this space. So you can imagine if you wound up getting the wind involved with this, it would be even worse. I can tell you that right leg is really... Three hours and a half, 17, 18 degrees or so feet are really really numb no matter what I do I can only heat this thing up to somewhere between 17 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit so when, you, when we look at this chart you start to realize these numbers make an awful lot of sense uh, they don't say your dog will die they don't say your dog you know can't go out for a walk or a run or play for a while but it does say that if your dog is exposed to to temperatures like I've been exposed to for hours and hours on end, there could be a problem. If you think that you put your dog out in a doghouse with plenty of blankets, that they're somehow magically going to warm up and be nice and toasty, you are fooling yourself. This is brutally cold. This is life-threateningly cold. It also breaks my heart to think of people, humans, that are homeless, Living like this, human, animal, it's rough. It would diminish your quality of life tremendously. We love our pets so much, and they ask so little in return. And I think the least we can do is bring them in on a cold night. I have been in a doghouse outside for over four hours. 15 degrees, really getting numb now. The uh, the pinpricks have moved to, to be daggers. Hands are completely numb. Really a lot of uh, just uncontrollable shivering at this point. Um, having a harder time just kind of remembering um, which buttons to push and what to say. And, and this is an easy night. Imagine if it were a, a winter storm, if it were wet and snowy, or if it were windy. After this experience, you will never be able to convince me that these animals aren't suffering. You know, walk a mile in their paws before you say, they're tough, they're used to it, they'll be fine. Our responsibility is to provide the best quality of life for the animals we love and cherish. And this, this, this ain't it. Please bring your animals in. If you see an animal outside in severe cold, notify the authorities. Notify your local animal shelter or humane society. Let somebody know because no animal should suffer like this. I can't imagine how many animals die prematurely, develop medical problems, and just have a very diminished and poor quality of life simply because they're cold. I think I've accomplished what I set out to do, and that was not just to see how cold it gets in a doghouse outside at night, 
but to experience what a dog would experience. And please bring your animals in when it's cold. 